Good evening, everyone. It's always nice to come together after missing a week. We have an extra week to build up the desire and the, the cheshek. And today we are starting a new peric. We're starting peric Zayin de Geras Atruva, which is on page 192. So where are we? I just said we're by peric Zayin. But where, where, where are we holding? What's, uh, what are we talking about? So as of now, up until this point, we've discussed the what and the why of tshuva. And in this period, we are going to discuss the how. I think the who we all know. I think we all need to do tshuva. <laughs> There's no big question about the who. But in Perik Aleph, in Perik Aleph of the Geras of Tshuva, the Alter Rebbe spoke about the what of tshuva. What is tshuva? The Alter Rebbe says over there, Sheyigmar belibay b'leib shalem, that you should decide with a complete heart, labal yoshu v'id l'kisla, never to return to the foolishness, and you won't be any more mated, you won't any more be rebel against Hashem, and uh, you'll do all the mitzvahs. In other words, it's a, what is tshuva? Tshuva is a complete resolve, an acceptance upon oneself, to be makabal upon oneself, the oil of Malchus Shemayim, and to do whatever Hashem says, and follow Him in all His commandments. That, that is what is tshuva. Why do we do tshuva? Why is it why is it necessary to do tshuva? So that was a discussion in the last few prakim, culminating with what we learned in Perik Vav. The reason why we do tshuva is because when we do an, when a yid does an avera, so you're pulling down from the primius achayis, you're pulling down from a very high level of alakus deep into klipa, not only into klipa snaiga, but until we call gimel klipas atmeis legamri, the complete uh, the completely impure klipas. And that's an incredible Golos Hashchina. So Tshuva is Tashuv Hei. The word Tshuva is a combination of Tashuv Hei. Hei referring to the Hei Tata. Hei Tata is the Malchus of Atzilus. Because the Pnimius Achayis of Malchus of Atzilus, we drag it into Klippa when we do our Vedas. And the purpose of Tshuva is to return our Neshama as well as the Chayis which we drew into Klippa and to draw Tashem. So that is the why. So again, what is tshuva? A complete acceptance, Kabbalah soil, a complete acceptance of Hashem's sovereignty. Why do we do tshuva? Because through our Avedis we drag down the Ptimi Yisachais and Teklipa and we need to restore it. We caused Golos Hashkina. And now in our Pedic we're going to figure out how to do tshuva. In other words, okay, I know why I need a tshuva. I also know what tshuva is. Tshuva is a resolve. But how do I arrive at that, that resolve? How does a person arrive at a place where they've completely resolved not to do an Aveira again. So that Dr. Rebbe is going to tell us in a Perik Zion, this is a two-step process. A two-step mental and emotional process that allows a person to arrive at Shuvah. That allows a person to arrive at this uh, complete resolve, not uh, never again to do an Aveira. Let's do this inside. Perik Zion, again, page 192. <coughs> the Ulam, however, the true and straight way to arrive at Shuvah Tata, which Shuvah Tata is the Hei Tata, returning, restoring the Hei Tata, Hanis Karliil, which we learned about in the previous Perik. There are two different ways, two different paths, generally speaking. Aleph, and not, not two different, uh, not one or the other, but one and the other. These are the two things that a person ought to take to heart in order to be able to arrive at Shuvah. Ha'alif, number one, is to evoke Hashem's Rachmim, Rachmim, from the source of a Rachmim. And the Ebi says Rachmim in general, there are two levels, there's, there's two levels. Sometimes we talk about Hashem as of HaRachaman, and sometimes we talk about Hashem as of Harachamim. Right? So on Shabbos we say Ava Rachamim. Sometimes you talk about Hashem as the Ava Rachman. What is the difference between Ava Rachamim and Ava Rachman? Sounds the same. One is plural ones. In fact, no, Ava Rachman means the merciful father. Ava Rachman means the father of mercy. In fact, I don't know what the Nusach is in, in, in different Nusachais, but in Chabad, when we say, um, 
מיכה מויכה, אין עשר סימי תשובה, מיכה מויכה אב, סוחר רחמן, so most times you say אב הרחמן, זכר יצור אב החיים ברחמן, but at certain times, such as in the Ill or Shabbos, or by Mincha we say אב הרחמים. And Chassidus explained that Av HaRachamim is higher than Av HaRachman. Av HaRachman means the father who was merciful. So the Rachman is an adjective for Av. The father who is merciful. The father who has compassion. Av HaRachman means the father of compassion. That is the Makar HaRachman. In other words, Av HaRachman means the source, just like a father is the source of the child. Av HaRachman means the source of mercy. As once we have already Av HaRachman, so, how much mercy does a father have? How much compassion? So, it's a lot. Fathers have a lot of uh, rachamim for their children, but ultimately, it's limited. Of a rachamim, the source, when you go to the very source of rachamim. So, that's infinite. It's the potential for rachamim. So, we're trying to evoke rachamim in makara rachamim. On the shmosay, the nafshei So, the first avoida is... Pasha to evoke mercy, Hashem's mercy, and our own mercy, our own compassion, our own rachimim, and our neshama, and our nefesh alikis, shenafla, mi'igra rama, which has fallen from a very high roof. Chai yachayim baruchu. Where does our neshama come from? The source of all life, blessed be He. And where did it fall? The bira amikta, to a very deep pit. And hechalos atumah v'seter achra, which are the hechalos of the tumah and the seter achra. So this is a, a, a brought out on the Zoyer. Igr, it's a, it's a, it's a Lashon. Igr, me igra rama from a high roof, labira amikta. That's what happens, our neshama. It, it sources igra rama, very high roof. And where are we bringing it down? When we do an Aveira, labira amikta into a very deep pit. Very deep pit, yeah. If Rachamim is the highest of the highest, why are we using Rachamim? Use all the time Rachamim. Because sometimes we can't reach that Madriga. Only on certain times when we're on certain... Uh, and certain people you know that sometimes there's an Ace Ratzon, and then we can reach the higher levels of Hashem. So we can sometimes we appeal to Avar Achman, sometimes we're not at that level. So the truth is, to fall from a roof to a pit itself is a long fall. But the Zayar doesn't say that if you fall from a, a roof to a pit. The Zayar says, Igra Rama, you fall from a high roof, Lebira Mikta. To a deep pit, a very deep pit. In other words, the fact that Elokus comes into Klippa, which if you remember we spoke about in the last period, that because of the Klippa, the Golos Ashkina, what happened was, is that the highest of the world entered Klippa. That is Igra Libira. That is a, something that fell from the roof to the pit. When a Yid does an Avera, then it's not an Igra, it's not a roof. Igra Rama, it's a high roof. Why? Because a Yid is... Pnimius achayis, pnimius of the of the hetata, and where is it falling? Not stam to a pit, which is klipa, but bira mikta, a deep pit, because it's given klipas atmeis. So again, yes, there is the galus hashchina that we caused with our avedas back then when they were when the beis was destroyed, which that already was taking chayis aliki, the chayis of the ebrister, the energy of Hashem, and putting it into klipa. But when we do an aveda. Then we're doing much more. Then we're taking Igra Rama, the Pnimiya Sachayis, Libira Mikta, the Gimel Klippas Atmeis. So the Savoida is taking time, Pashat, to think about the incredible Rachmanis on the Neshama. That the Neshama, which comes from Bonim Matam Lashem Alekechem, Chela Kashem Ame, a portion of Hashem, Pnimiyas of Shem Havaye Baruchu. And when a person does an Aveda, you're dragging your Neshama. Kicking and screaming and crying, you're dragging your neshama into the deepest level of klipa. Think about the Rahmanas of what that is. Think about it. You're taking, it's like taking a prince, pulling him from the palace and throwing him into a, to a filthy dungeon. That's what every time a person does not hate it, that's what we're doing. Moreover, not only should you have Rahmanas on your neshama, Vaval Mikoira, you should have Rahmanis, the Makar Achaim, the Makar of the Neshama, the source of the Neshama, and the source of life. Who shame Avaye Baruch, you have to have Rahmanis, and the Abishter, Kameshikosu, as the Pasuk says. Viyashi, Velashem, Virachameu. It's in the Haftira for the tiniest Tzibur. So the Pasuk says, Viyashi, Velashem, right? Yazev Rasha, Darkoi, Vishav, and Machshavayzav. 
a rasha shall leave his ways, and the evil person shall leave his thoughts. V'yashuv el Hashem, he should return to Hashem. V'yirachameyu, so usually the way V'yirachameyu is translated is, and Hashem will have rachmanus on him, that if the rasha, the wicked person, abandons his ways and his thoughts, and returns to Hashem, V'yirachameyu, Hashem will have rachmanus on him. By the way, the Alter Rebbe learns it, no, Yaziv rasha darkei, the Rosh shall leave his ways, Vishav, and the wicked person marks the ways of his thoughts, V'yashav al Hashem, and to return to Hashem, V'yirachameyu, and have Rachmanus on Hashem, V'yirachameyu, have Rachmanus on Shem Avaya, have Rachmanus on the Eibishter, who you dragged into the Klippa. Pirush meaning, L'edir Rachamim, to awaken mercy, al Hashpa, Shem Havaya Baruch on the air, the energy that comes from Shem Havayish and the Shtal Shalav Yarda, which chained down and was forced down to Yichalos HaSeter Achra Atmeim into the chambers of the Seter Achra, the impure chambers of the Seter Achra, Lach Yisam, and the energy from Havayim must give life to the Klippes. And who causes that? Ayidei Maisa Emish V'tach Belaysav. This is caused by the actions of human beings V'tach Belaysav V'mach Shavaysav Arayis and their conniving and their evil thoughts. As it says, and as it says in Shira Shirim, the Pasuk says, Melech Asur Barahatim. The king is tied down, or is, cap in, or is a captive, Barahatim. What does Barahatim mean? So if you look in the Mefarshim on the Pasuk, the different uh, Barahatim can mean braids, braids of hair. Or the other Mepharshim give different answers. Kishuv. But the Tikkun Isaiah says, what did you say? Kishuf. Kishuf? Kishufim is Rehatim. In the Tanakh. What is Kishufim? Magic. Kishuf. It's called Rehatim. I didn't see that in the Mepharshim. But the Tikkun Isaiah says that what is the Rehatim is Birhite Moicha. Vukhulu. Birhite Moicha. One, what we find in the Torah when it talks about Rahatim, it talks about it by Yaakov Avinu, that he put the sticks Barahatim, Beshika Soy Samayim. Barahatim means where the water, Rahatim can mean something which runs. When the water, where the water runs. So a running spring, a running river is called, it's called Rahatim. So Melech Asr Barahatim, so the king is tied down Barahatim. So the Tukunayzer says that just like a river is constantly flowing, so our minds also are like a river, constantly flowing with thoughts, constantly running. Our minds are constantly operational. Melech, the Eibishter, and more specifically Melech, Malchus Datsilos, because we're talking about the Hei Tata, which is Malchus Datsilos. Melech, Asr Barahatim, means that the king is tied down where? In your mind, in my mind, in your mind, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our evil thoughts, the Abish there is in captive, there is in Golos. When we're thinking, when we think thoughts that are inappropriate, the Abish there is caught up and stuck up in there. He begins Golos Hashchina Kanal, and that is the Golos Hashchina. I think also Rahatim it's by uh, Yaakov when he was working for Lavan, Ritzcha, who was working seven years for Leah for Rachel. Said there when he put the sheep. Barahat. That's what it says, right? I just said that. When he put the sticks, Barahatim. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't hear no, very good. Was man hamasugalazem? So before we could, before we continue, so what we have over here is this concept of that when we're doing tshuva. Step number one of doing tshuva is having rachmim on your neshama, having rachmim on the eibishter. Tshuva means getting out of yourself. We said before that what we said before what is tshuva? Tshuva means a complete resolve to do what the eibishter wants, which means it stops being about what I want and what I need and what makes me feel good, and it's about the eibishter. And all too often. When we do tshuva, the tendency is, is that what's causing us to do tshuva is that I feel like a loser. I feel I've not uh, met my expectations for myself. I should be more. I should be better. Come, we go to Shul Yim Kippur and we're all upset. I had a terrible year. What does that have to do with the Eibishter? What does that have to do with the Neshama? Garnish, nothing. 
think about that for a second. If your tshuva is about yourself, so right now I feel very bad that I did Averis. And I don't like that feeling. So my tshuva is based on the fact that I don't want a bad feeling. I want a good feeling. What's going to happen tomorrow when I see a piece of chocolate? I'm going to go run for it, even if it's bad for me. Why? I didn't really leave myself. I'm, I'm still looking to feel good. I'm still engrossed in myself, obsessed with myself, preoccupied with myself. My truth is also about myself. And at the end of the day, if I have not left myself, if it's still all about me and my need to be better and my need and I, 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 my expectations of myself, my desire for shlemus, for fulfillment, for completion, etc. If I'm still following my desires tomorrow, I'll have another desire tomorrow. I might desire to do an Aveda and that's going to make me feel good. And, then, and that tshuva isn't lasting. Tshuva that's lasting is when it stops being about you. When it starts being about the Eberster. So step number one is step out of yourself. Start thinking about Hashem. Start thinking about what you're doing to Hashem when you're doing an Avera. Start thinking about what you're doing to your Neshama. Again, that's a spiritual. Your Neshama, which is a chilek, a lekam, imal mamish, and you're dragging it into klipa. It's not about you and your resume and how much covered you're going to have or what's going to say on your matzeva. It's not about any of that. It's about the Eberster, and it's about the Chilek Alekami Mal Mamish, which is within you. Have Rachmanus on that. There was a Chassid whose name was Ramendel Chain. A holy Yid, he was, he was, he was killed, Al-Kiddush Hashem. He lived in the early, uh, 20, early uh, 20th century. So once before Kiddush, he was saying, Mizmer la David. Hashem Roy le Yachsar. And when he got to the Pasuk, Gam ki Eilach. The gates of Mavis, Lai Ira Ra ki Ata Yimadi. So he stopped. And he started thinking a little. And then when he stopped, he told everyone, let me, let me tell you what I was just thinking. This is the meaning of the Pasuk. Gam ki eilach begates al mavas. Even when I'm going in the shadow of death. In other words, there's Havedas around me. And I have temptations for all these Havedas. Loi ira ra. I'm not scared of the evil that it's going to do to, to, to me. That's not what bothers me. I'm not scared of the fact that it's ra. Oh, it's bad for me. What bothers me? Ki ata imadi. The knowledge that you're with me, that you, that my neshama, that the Eibishter is with me, and my neshama is a chilek alekamim mal. And if I do an aveda, I'm dragging the Eibishter into that garbage, into the filth. That's what my deterrent wow. is not. But you know, I'm not scared of the ra. It's but what I'm scared of is ki ata imadi. The knowledge that you're with me, and if I go into the gates of all us, I'm going to pull you along with me. It's a deep thought. And this idea in general, we have to move out of ourselves. And this is something which we have in this Parsha, in our Parsha. We know always we find the connection to what we're talking about. We have it, first of all, in Parsha's Matis. This week is Matis Masse. We have it in both Parshas. In Parsha's Matis, the Abishar tells uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, Go tell the Yidin, Nekoim is Nikmas B'nei Yisrael Me'esa Midyanim. Go take the revenge of a, for the Yidin, on behalf of the Yidin, from the Midyanim, because we know the Midyanim, they did terrible, uh, terrible damage to the Klal Yisrael. Many, many thousands of Yidin were killed because of the Midyanim. And Hashem says, the Yidin have to take revenge. Moshe goes to Yidin, and what did he tell the Yidin? We have to go and we have to do losses, nikmas Hashem bin Midyan. For a Yid, it's never about himself. For a yid, it's always, we're worried about the Eberster. V'yashiv el Hashem, and I'm doing tshuva, it's not about me. It's v'yirachameyu, it's because I'm rachmanes on the Eberster. For a yid, when I look at Minyan, the problem isn't what you did to me, the problem is what you did to the Eberster. Nikmas Hashem. And then towards the end of, of Parshish Masay, so we have a pasuk, Where the Pasuk says, this is Pedic uh, Lamid, uh, Pedic Lamid Dalit, uh, Pedic Lamid Hey, sorry. Pasuk Lamid Dalit, the Abister says, Vele Satami Esa'aretz, don't defile the land. Asher Atam Yeshvim Ba, which you are sitting in it. Asher Ani Shoichin Besoicha, because I am there also. Ki Ani Hashem Shoichin Besoich Bene Yisrael, because I am the Abister who's amongst you, and as Rashi says, even when we're Tommy, the Shekhinah is with us. When we become Tommy, we have to know it's not only ourselves, we're making the Eberster Tommy. And we have to push a think about this and have Rachmanes on the Eberster and our Neshama. The Sifri on this Pasuk is a very powerful Sifri. The Sifri says, 
Chaviv in Yisrael. Again, Sifri in the towards the end, in the end of our parsha. Chaviv in Yisrael. How precious are the Eden? Sha'af al pi she'im t'meim shechina b'nayim. That even when we are tummy, the shechina is amongst us. That's very easy to know. So we can pat ourselves on the back. Wow, it's beautiful. But that's also that's an achrayis. That's an achrayis. Realizing that we become tummy, we're slapping the eibister. Shenemar, as the pasuk says, ki ani shoichin b'seicham. And then the, the Shifri continues, Rabbi Nasser Neymer, Chavivim Yisrael, Yidna Precious, Shebechol, Mokim, Shegolo, wherever they go in Golos, Shechina Iman, Shechina is with them. When we go in Golos, not only physical Golos, and spiritual Golos, and the Klippas, the Shechina is with us. And it goes to all the, all the different Golos. And then Rabbi Yomer, Rabbi says, Mashal Lama Adavar Doima, you want to know what you can compare this to? Lamelach Sha'amar Le'avdei, to a king who told his servant, Im Tivakshuni, if you're ever looking for me, you want to know where I am? Hareini Eitzel Bini, I'm by my son. Calls man Sha'ata Mivakshini. Anytime you want to find me, Hareini Eitzel Bini, I am by my son. Vachenu Emer, as the Pasuk says, Hashrechen Itam Beseich to Moisam. David says, I'm always there. Even Beseich to Moisam, I'm also always there. And lastly, we're about to enter the month of, the month of Menachem of. Shemini Yisrael is called Menachem of, not only of, but Menachem of. And what is the word, what does Menachem of mean? So of, of is the father, Menachem is to console. Is to, is the, to console, but who's consoling who? If it's the Eberster who's consoling us, then the name of the month should have been of Menachem. The father is Menachem. What is Menachem of? Menachem of means we are consoling the Father. Like we say on Tisha B'Av, Menachem Tzien, Obeni Yerushalayim, right? When we say Menachem Tzien, does that mean that Tzien is Menachem? That Tzien is consoling? No. Menachem Tzien, we are consoling Tzien. Abish is consoling Tzien. Menachem of means we console the Father. That means when it comes to the month of Av, the month of the Churban Beis Hamikdash, what is our focus on? Not, not our Tzara, but we're focused on the Golos Hashchina, and we're focused on the idea of we have to be Menachem the Av, we have to be Menachem the Father. There's a fascinating letter from the Rebbe, which the Rebbe wrote to someone in Cheshvin of Tafshin Yud Aleph, of 1950. This is a few months after the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayats, passed away. The Rebbe at this point had not even yet officially accepted upon himself to be the Rebbe. That happened uh, the Nesias, that happened a few months later. But the Rebbe wrote a letter to a Chassid, someone who had learned in the Lubavitch Yeshiva, and uh, who wanted to go to college. And the Rebbe wrote to him as follows. I'm going to translate it into English. So, the Rebbe says, you perhaps could tell me that since it seems to you that you want to go to college, although the Rebbe writes in a, foot, in a parenthesis, this is the opposite of what the Rambam writes in Hilchus Gerish and Seif Peri Beis, where there the Rambam says that every Yid wants to always do mitzvahs and stay away from Averis, even though, even a Yid who comes and says, I don't want to do a, a, a mitzvah, Taylor says he's lying, really, really, he wants to do a mitzvah. So the Rebbe is like in a... In a, in a by the way, adding in, it's not true that you want to go to college. You say you want to go to college, but really, really, you want to do what the Abishter wants you to do. You don't want to go to college. But you say that there's someone who's telling you that it's not appropriate for you. It's not appropriate because you're a Tamim. Tamim is the name of the Abachar, someone who learned in the Yeshiva Temchet Mimim. You're a Talmud of the Rebbe. In other words, the Rebbe's talking about his father in law, the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayatz. And therefore, my father-in-law, the Rebbe, is melava you, is going along with you wherever you go. So therefore, when you go to college, so the Rebbe is going along with you. <laughs> That's cute. And this is in halacha, the Rebbe says. It says, the Gemara, it's, the Gemara says in Makis, <laughs> Talmud Shagala Maklin Rabbi Imai. The halacha is that if a Talmud is sent to Ir Miklat, so the teacher is compelled to go along. You're going to college, the Rebbe is going with you. So you, you're aware of that. So what do you say? You're saying, ah, 
Who says that I'm, I'm muhrach and that I'm compelled? So for a little while, I'll stop being a tamim, I'll stop being a chassid of the Rebbe, and therefore there's no problem. Once I stop being a tamim, I'll take a break from being a tamim, I'll take a break from being a chassid of the Rebbe, and therefore the Rebbe won't come to college with me. All's good. So the Rebbe responds, and the Rebbe says, that's not something that you can do. Just like we know that a geir who becomes a geir, he can't go back and become a goy chas v'shalom. And even if he does an avera afterwards, he's a yid, because he was in his geir. The same thing is within levels of kedusha itself. Obviously, a geir is coming from klipa to kedusha. Within levels of kedusha itself, someone who became a chas at one time, and someone who connected, was neskasher, connected to the Rebbe, and therefore, kemayim ha'panam alpanim, as water reflects uh, water. So the Rebbe therefore connected back to him. So this chassid can't, can't, and can't uh, break that connection. Can't stop that connection. Because that's totally in the Rebbe. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe, because of the Rebbe's tremendous kindness and goodness, the Rebbe is also bazikim. The Rebbe is connected to you with chains. Al Derech, what it says, Nigeres HaTshuva Perek Zayin, Rebbe references here, Melach Asur Barahatim Berihite Moicha. And the same thing is true by Tzadikim, and especially by the Nasi Hadoyer, and especially the Nasim of Toyra Sanistar, Ukiyadua. So they're basically, the Rebbe is telling him, you think you're going to go, you know, you know Marchasa, you, you should know that once you're connected to the Rebbe, the Rebbe is connected to you, and if you're going to college, you're schlepping the Rebbe with you into college. So it's interesting that how the Rebbe takes and applies that which we learned over here in Tanya and saying it's not only true but negates our relationship with, with Hashem, but also a, a chassid and his Rebbe, a chassid has to know he has a big responsibility. If you connect it to a Rebbe, then you have to know that if, that if you go to a place that's inappropriate for you to go, the Rebbe is with you. Ki ata imadi, the Rebbe is with you. And therefore, forget about yourself. Have rachmanes on the Eibish, have rachmanes on, on, on your Rebbe, right? Now, when is the proper time to sit down and start thinking about this? When's the proper time to start thinking about the big Rahmanis that it is on Hashem? So, thank you. The proper time for this is Tikkun Chatzais. We'll find out. We'll find out why. Sorry? You remember to base it. I said we'll find out. We'll find out. But the ba- proper time for that is Tikkun Chatzais. Kamesha Kasuf Besidr, Bahara, as it says in the Siddur and Ha'ara, excuse me, Ayin Sham Ba'irach, see there at length. The Alter Rebbe is referring to his own Siddur. Um, the Alter Rebbe there is referring to his own Siddur. We know that the Al-Tabi wrote a Siddur, I mean, he compiled a Siddur, and there's also, in addition to Nuschat Filo, there's also certain things that he wrote in the Siddur. One of the things is, there's a long Ha'ara, of Pich Siddur, that al Tabi writes in the Seder Tikkun Chatzais, and al is referring the reader to that Ha'ara. And that's why in Tikkun Chatzais we say, Nafla Ateres Reishenu, Oina Lanu Kichatanu. The Atara Sarishenu, the crown of our head has fallen. Ain't alone woe woe unto us, Kihatanu, because we caused it with our sins. What is Atara Sarishenu? Atara Sarishenu is the Hei Tata, is the Pnimi Sachai, Shem Havaya, which has fallen into the Klippas. Ain't alone woe is to us, because why is, what caused the Nafla Atara Sarishenu, what caused that the Chayis of Hashem, of Shem Havaya, should enter the Klippa, Kihatanu? Now, although it says here, Tikkun Chatzais, I'm assuming that most of us over here don't do Tikkun Chatzais too often. We will find other times still, but we'll talk about that in Mr. Shem later. And that's why Hashem is called Melech Aluv, a king who is disgraced. There's a, there's a sefer, a medrash called Pirkei Hechalos, written by Rabbi Shmol ben Elisha Koyen Gadol. It's a very Kabbalistical medrash. And over there, in Perik Yudches, over there, you have Melech Rachmon, Melech Chanon, Melech Gadol, Abacher. And one of the things in the list, it goes through Melech this, Melech that, and one of the things he says over there is Melech Olof, a disgraced, a disgraced king. 
why would you call Hashem a disgraced king? And the answer is, we, dis- we, we take Melech, which again, the word Melech, Malchus Datsilus, Eitata, we drag the Melech, all of we disgrace the king, by dragging him into Klippa. Meshachos of Aramak Zal. As Ramak, as Ramak also writes about this, Ki Einacha El Bein Gadol Mezeh. There is no greater disgrace than that with the Ramak Ramesha Kardaviro, the author, yeah, yeah, yeah. author of the Pardis, the teacher of the Rizal. His Yerzeret was yesterday. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Okay. Ki Einacha El Bein Gadol Mezeh. There is no greater disgrace than dragging Hashem into Klippas, which is what we do when we do an Avera. And again, when we do Averas, we're so, we're so self-obsessed about it. What did I do? Oh, I did it. It's not about you. Forget about it. It's about the Yashiv al Hashem. Return to the Abishter. Start thinking about the Abishter. That's what real tshuva is. And especially, when a person who understands will contemplate and the greatness of the Ein Saif, and the Seif and who fills the worlds and surrounds the worlds, call Echa Echa everyone according to what their mind and their comprehension can allow. So you will become very embittered over this, over what you have caused to the Shekhinah. So you notice over here, the Alter Rebbe says, Ibifrat, especially if you contemplate, then Yismarmer, you'll be embittered, Mo'id, Mo'id very much. Meaning the Alter Rebbe is implying, even if you don't understand the greatness of Hashem, and even if you don't contemplate so much the greatness of Hashem, just the simple Yid, you go over to Yid and you tell him, you're taking the highest of Shem Avai of the Ebishter and pulling it into clip, automatically you understand it's Rachmanis. But the more you contemplate, the more you think about the greatness of Hashem, the more you think about the greatness of Hashem, the more you realize the tremendous Rachmanis it is, that you're dragging this Eibishter, the Eibishter, the Ein Sof of the Eibishter into Klippah, and then you smarm Melzeh, then you become embittered, Mo'id, Mo'id, very much so. By the way, I have Moshe Kotevero, I heard yesterday that Ariza was must with him, and he said that he is Tzadik... So, li, so, Isi, Allah, yeah. Eitz. Yeah. Yeah. Vabez... So that was number one. So the first thing, the first path to tshuva, we want to know what is going to bring a person to doing a tshuva nechayna, a proper tshuva, a tshuva which will then restore the energy of the Shem Havaya to its rightful place. So the first thing is to contemplate and to evoke the mercy, your own mercy, Hashem's mercy, on the Golos Hashkina, on the Golos of the Neshama. That is step number one. And when you do so, and when you really understand what you have, what you have um, done and accomplished, I don't know what the word is, that's the opposite. <laughs> what's the opposite? What's the, what's the antonym of accomplished? But you've, what you've, uh, the disaster that you have created to doing an Avera, that will bring a person to doing a true tshuva, to truly committing to never doing an Avera again. Vahabe is what is the second element necessary in tshuva in order to bring to tshuva? is to crush, to denigrate the clip on the Sitar Achra. The whole energy of Klippa. What is Klippa? Klippa's arrogance. Klippa's hot ear. Kameshikosov, as the Pasuk says, in Tagbiya Kanashav Gomer, Klippa likes to soar up in the ear, pretend it's something large and big. Vabitush Vahno ad offer mamish and when you when you when you decimate and you denigrate and humble it to the earth, Zuhim Misasa Ubitula, that's how you destroy it. Vahainu. How is how how is this accomplished? How do you destroy the klipa? Al Yidei Lev Nishbar Venitka through a broken and crushed heart. Vili is nivza bein of nimas vhulu. And to view oneself as a lowly, disgusting, repulsive thing. Obviously, we're talking about the body and the guf, the nefesh abahamis. As it says in the Zayar, The Pasuk says, Zivche Elikim. The sacrifices, the karbanis for Elikim. Is ruach nishbara as a broken spirit, leiv nishbara v'nitka a heart which is broken and crushed. So the Zayar explains. 
kikol carbon but behema or l'shem havaya midas harachim. Every time we bring a carbon from a behema, we're bringing it to shem havaya, which is midas harachim. If you look in the pasuk, what does it say? Reich nichoyach. Lashab doesn't say reich nichoyach lalikim. The pasuk says Adam ki yakri mekem carbon lahavaya lashem doesn't say lalikim. Whenever we talk about kabbanas, it talks about talks about shem hashem. In fact, zevech lalikim yacharam. In other words, there's a certain thing we don't bring kabbanas lalikim, and why is that? Because what are you doing? You're bringing a, you're bringing a behema as a carbon. And you're telling, the, as we know, the famous uh, Pirush of the Ramban on this day, you're telling the Eibishter, really, I should be on the, I did an Aveda, really, I should be on the Mizbech, I should be killed. So I bring a carbon and consider it as if it was me. Why should the Eibishter consider the behemoth as if it's you? You did the Aveda, not the behemoth. <laughs> we do Kaparis, we did the Aveda, the chicken's going to die. Why? What's up? That's why. In order for a carbon to work, we need Shem Havaya, we need the Midas HaRachmim, because it requires Hashem's Rachmim to exchange the animal for ourselves, so that we did the Aveda and the animal dies. That requires Havaya. Elikim, if you want to go Midas Adin, Midas Adin means you want to go justice? That's not justice. There is no justice in you doing the, you doing the Aveda and the Behema being shechted. So therefore, we never invoke Shem Elikim by Karbanas, it's always about Shem Havaya. Because for a carbon to work, to be effective, we need to have the Midas HaRachmin. Avol HaShem Malikim, He Midas Adin, but the Shem Malikim, which is Midas Adin, ain't makriven carbon behema. We don't bring a carbon behema, but there is Ziv Chayalikim. There is a carbon that works even for Shem Malikim, even for Midas Adin. And what, what is that? Ruach Nishbara. What is Ruach Nishbara? When we go, when we break the Klippa, when we break the Ruach HaTumah, when we break the Ruach HaTumah, Vasetera Achra, Vizeu Ruach Nishbara. What does it mean? The Pasuk says, Zivche Elikim Ruach Nishbara. What is a carbon that we bring for Shem Elikim? It's breaking the Setera Achra. Veheich Nishbara Ruach HaSetera Achra. And how do we destroy, how do we break the Setera Achra? What's the next words in the Pasuk? Leiv Nishbara Venitke. Kshaleiv Nishbara Venitke Vokhulu. When the heart is, when the heart is crushed, then we destroy the Klippus. <laughs> So now we understand the Pasuk beautifully. Ziv Elikim. You want to know. Elikim, when you bring, for Shem Elikim Midas Adin, when you bring a behemoth for a carbon, it says, that doesn't do it for me. Api Midas Adin, that's not going to get you your kapara. But when you break the klipis, through breaking your heart, then even Midas Adin, you don't need Midas Arachim, even Mitzad Midas Adin, you also get forgiven, and you also get all the brachas that you need. So what is the Alter Rebbe bringing down the Zayir here to establish? That how do we break? Ruach Nishbara? How, what is Ruach Nishbara? Most of us, we, we say the Pasuk, and Pasuk Shat is, Ruach Nishbara, a broken spirit, is talking about the human being, Lev Nishbara in a broken heart. But the Zayir says no. Ruach Nishbara is the Ruach Atuma, is the Klippa. Ziv Chayelikim, what, what is the carbon, which is Rotsi, which is acceptable for Midas Adin, is Ruach Nishbara, when you break the Klippa. Think about it for a second. When you did a, when you did a, when you did a Avera, you created the Klippa. You want to know how to achieve kapara, apidin, not apirachmim, apidin, ruach nishbara, go break the klippa. How do you break the klippa? Leiv nishbara v'nitka, through breaking the heart. So the second part, the second thing that Rebbe is prescribing over here, is breaking, is, is breaking one's, the klippa through breaking one's heart. Having a broken heart, having humility, destroying, putting a, a pin in the, in the bubble of our gaiva, of our yeshes, of our, uh, our arrogance and our pride and becoming a humble person. When we humble ourselves, we destroy the klipa. And when we destroy the klipa, that is the zivchei elikim, and that is the second element that brings us to tshuva. So the first element that we discussed, if you remember, was the idea of being mo'erer rachmim an Hashem. Being mo'erer rachmim an Hashem and our neshama. Over there, the nekudah so much wasn't the blame. And the first, the, first, the first concept was actually more of a kiruv, was more of feeling close to Hashem. And therefore feeling bad for Hashem. Rachmim is, rachmim is a form of kiruv. Rachmim, who do you, you feel a rachmim on someone, on someone or something when you feel close to them. The second one is more a gvuradik approach. It's pasha, it's realizing how lowly you are and having a broken heart, a humble heart. And both of these ingredients are necessary 
in order to do tshuva. Again, what does tshuva come from? Tshuva comes from that you don't think Hashem is too... I'm sorry, what is it? What do Avedis come from? Where, where do Avedis come from? It's two components which are related to each other. One is you don't care too much about Hashem. And number two, you care too much about yourself. You're, you're engrossed in yourself. You're obsessed with yourself. Your ego is inflated. And you're busy thinking, what do I want? What do I need? What do I desire? What's going to make me feel good? And you forget about Hashem. Shuva is reversing that. And in reversing that, we have these two elements. Number one is, think about the Eibishter. Hashem have, have Rachmanus and Eibishter. Realize what you're doing to Hashem when you do an Avera. And number two, stop taking yourself and your desires and yourself so seriously. That's klipa. Your nefesh Bahamas is klipa. Your desires are klipa. It's a bunch of hot ears. Sticking on, sticking up in. Burst the bubble. Realize what. Realize how lowly your nefesh Bahamas is, and which is your default status of who you are. And when you have these two in yanim, number one, you're thinking about the Abishter, thinking about the the achmanus that is in the Abishter, shchinta begalusa. And number two, you realize how lowly you are. These are the two elements that allow you taka, to do tshuva nachayna. Then you can taka, say, Eibishter, I'm not doing Avedis anymore. And that's something which is sustainable. Because again, tshuva, which is based, what I would say, tshuva in quotation marks, tshuva, which is based on me and my feelings. Oh, I don't feel good because I do Avedis. So no, now let me start doing tshuva. That's not a sustainable tshuva. It's all based on yourself and your own klipa. And... The, the, the wheel is going to keep on spinning and you'll Aveda Tshuva, Aveda Tshuva because it's all about you. Real Tshuva is stepping away from yourself, having an Achmanis and the Eibishter and realizing how lowly you are. So you realize, if you realize how lowly you are, then you're not doing mitzvahs for yourself, you're doing it for the Eibishter. Very good. How exactly do we crush the heart? How do we break the heart? So again, the second element we mentioned over here is breaking and crushing the heart. But how do we accomplish that? Hine is al Rebbe says, Ma'at mizeir, a little huayidis higufim v'tainius, it's by self-denial and abnegation and fasting. B'dirisenu e'la in our generation, she'ein lo nukeich l'sanes arba. In our generation, we don't have the koyach to fast very much. K'david ha-melech, k'david ha-melech, k'mayim razal. As the as Chazal tell us, Al Pasuk Libi Chol Bekirbi, when David says, "My heart is hollow within me," Shahar gave betainis because he killed the Yitzchak with a fast. So David Amalek was able to do tshuva through fasting. But in our generation, as the Alter Rebbe says, because we don't have that koyach, so therefore it's only very little. We fast and and the segufma only very little. And instead, the Alter Rebbe is going to offer an alternative. But before we before we do that, so we know that from the times the Alter Rebbe when he wrote this, what well, this was written in the in the 17, uh, 1790s. So more than 200 years uh, have passed since then. And since then, even the Ma'at Mazer is also gone. In other words, today we don't fast, period. No fasting, no sigufim. We'll read you another letter from the Rebbe, where the Rebbe writes about this to someone. So a letter the Rebbe wrote to someone in Nisan of Tafshin Tazai in 1956. So the Rebbe, says, the Rebbe starts off, I'm happy to hear, I, I was happy to get your, your letter about your we- upcoming wedding, B'Shal Tevim I want to know more in detail, where you're going to be Pesach, etc. I'm sure you let me know. And then the Rebbe says, that which you let me know about your Hanhaga, about your behavior, I want you to know I'm very unhappy. Or, L'yosher be'enai. It's uh, not at all glad by me. <laughs> that which you fast until midday, till Chatzos, on Mondays and Thursdays. Think about that. That's not what's the big deal. It's half a day. Half a day. Twice a week. That's, that's, that's not the end of the world, right? Rebbe says, Loi zuhi derech It's mm-hmm. not the way of chsidus. <laughs> and the Rebbe says, instead of tachas instead of afflicting the body, afflict your nefesh abahamas. Meaning, don't touch the health of your body through not eating and drinking as is necessary for your health. And instead, exchange that for afflicting your nefesh abahamas. Meaning, don't follow your tithes in eating and drinking. In other words, don't, uh, you don't have to eat. They said there was a mashpia in France. There was from this in Amarav. He came from Russia and he was a very, a very holy Jew. And he once said about the Bachram and the Yeshiva, he said, I understand, you want to eat bread and butter. I get it, if you need it for health. But why do you have to eat the bread and butter together? Eat the bread and then eat the butter. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, the Rebbe says, whatever you need for health, do. But 
you, you want to afflict yourself? Don't eat, don't eat that which is tasty. Don't eat the ice cream. Okay. Afflict yourself not to speak Dvar and Betelem. And especially Avak Lashon Hara or Stam Dibur, which is, uh, which is Aser. You want to afflict yourself? Be Mekayim the Mitzvah Ahav Taliyach HaKamaycha even to a Yid? That uh, is, is not reciprocating that obviously Yisrael. Even a Yid maybe who harmed you in the past or someone who uh, was Negea and your covet. These Hanhagis, the Rebbe says, sometimes it's harder to do these than to abstain from eating and drinking. And most importantly, they don't um, weaken the body and therefore they don't weaken your ability to learn the sh your shirim and taira to do mitzvahs behidur without your body getting in the way. So this is, and this is by the way, one letter of many such letters from the Rebbe where the Rebbe talks about this. And this is, uh, we have to know, the Alter Rebbe already in his generation, the Alter Rebbe says they don't have, the Alter Rebbe was a very strong person, the Gashmias. And by the way, the Alter Rebbe himself would fast a lot. And the old times, of the Gemaras were very heavy. Because they had like wooden... Uh, Covers. Covers, very, the big ones are very heavy. Now, Tarebbe was fast until he, I don't remember the number, one or two or three, he would, if he couldn't lift those heavy gemaras, then he would break his fast and he would start eating. Al Tarebbe himself was known as a big, was a giber. But the, even so, the Al Tarebbe said that in his, already in his generations, they didn't have the koyach they had in previous generations. And therefore, the Al Tarebbe in his generation says, today, a little fasting. And comes along the Rebbe, and the Rebbe says, today, no fasting. No fasting. If you want to, there, there are other ways to break ourselves other than denying the body. We could deny the body, but deny the body its pleasures, not, uh, not anything which will deprive it actually of the koyach that it needs. So, al Rebbe continues and says, 11 lines from the bottom, Ah, however, You want to know what is the main, the main thing? The, way, the main way to have, to be machnia the heart, to uh, humble the heart, that it should be broken, and it should be um, it should be crushed. Which that automatically causes the elimination of the ruach hatuma of sitar achra. What is the main way? This is something which it talks about in the Zayar. Is that it says that every yid, every single day has to be a mari duchujmana. Mari duchujmana means a master of reckoning. To make a cheshbon. Cheshbon nefesh. Yeah. But the Kemari Duchujmana, you're the boss. You know, when uh, you're if charge. you're taking inventory, if you're an employee, it's very different than when you're taking an inventory when you're a boss. When you're taking when you're a boss, it's Negei Benefesh. It's the numbers aren't you know, if you give me a job to do the counting, okay. Yeah, yeah. When you do when you're the boss, it means and, something. Uh, yeah. So you mari the khushman, you have to be the boss of the khajman, the bawa khajman. Boy mekadas, thinking deeply, lahamik daiti be no say shah achas bakol yeme laila, to think deeply. Every day, one hour before Tikkun Chatzos, Lisboinim b'Mashapal v'Asa to contemplate that which you did b'Chatav with your Avedis, b'Chinas Galus Hashchina Canal. The Galus Hashchina is mentioned earlier. The Garam Laker Nishmasa you've caused to uproot your Neshama v'Nafshi Yelikis Mechay Yechayim Baruchu from its source and the source of our life. Yeridu l'Makom Atumah v'Hamavas. You dragged it down to the place of Tuma and death. Hey Nechalat Seter Achra. Venasis bechines merkava you're, you, 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 you're even worse. You are a merkava to the klipa. Merkava means you are a, a chariot, a vehicle to them. You're lower than to them. You're receiving from them. Lekabel mem shefa v'chayis. You're receiving from the klipa. You're the lowest. You're lower than kimul klipas atmeis. Lashbiya legufa ykenal. You're causing to receive hashpot. You go from the klipas. So although this sounds similar to the first idea I mentioned in the beginning of the period, it's different. The first one, it wasn't about ascribing blame. It was about Rachman. First one, the purpose wasn't to realize how lowly you are. The purpose was Pasha to think about the Abish and the Neshama and to have an incredible Rachmanus on them. The second, uh, the second one over here, it's a similar as Bainanus. But here the purpose of this Bainanus is Pasha to have a lave nish by a broken heart. Look at what I accomplished. Look at what I did. Look at look at what I uh, not the word accomplished. Look at what I uh, destroyed. So once again over here we have the Alter Rebbe bringing up the idea of Tikkun Chatzais. And so in both places, in other words, Sayin the first time with Alter Rebbe says the appropriate time for Rachmim to uh, awaken the Rachmim is Tikkun Chatzais. And Sayin also over here in the second instance where Alter Rebbe talks about breaking the heart also Tikkun Chatzais. 
So once again over here, I'd like to turn to something that the Alter Rebbe himself writes. There's a Sefer called Amari Admur Azak, and it's a whole set. And this is one of the Sfarim. It's called Inyonim. In other words, it's a collection of Amarim of the Alter Rebbe. And we have, um, if you look over there, you have Amari Admur Azak, and that goes according to the years. And you have Alatayra, and you have Anavi. And then this is just Inyonim, on different Inyonim, Amarim of the Alter Rebbe. So Alter Rebbe writes over here. There are two, there's two Mamarim where the Alter Rebbe touches upon this topic. So the Rebbe writes over here that not all times are the same. Now this is something that I think we discussed in the past. It's not pshat that, uh, you know, all times are the same. Morning, afternoon, night, Shabbos, Yom Tev, weekday, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Purim, Elama, the difference is in what we do during those times. But the etzem, the time is the same. You know, Chassidus explains that no, the, the time is a different time. The energy is a different energy. And therefore, our capabilities at different times is different. What we can accomplish on Shabbos, we can't accomplish during the week. It's not just that we're doing something different that day. The time is actually a different time. So therefore, there are certain times which are more appropriate and amenable, conducive, for having a broken heart. So the Rebbe says, therefore, if you want to have a broken heart, when is the best time to have a broken heart? You would think so, but hold on one second. So that is the best time, if you want to have a broken heart, is a time when you're anyways upset. You're upset about something else. A business deal fell through. Got into a fight with, uh, with someone. You're anyways in a bad mood. So now, as we all know, when you're already in a bad mood about one thing, it's very easy to, as they say, pile on, right? And you know what? You think I'm in a bad mood because of that? Think about all the Avedis that I've done. Think about all the terrible things and how what I've caused to the Abish that calls Hashkina and uh, all these things. Now, that's very interesting. He says the most appropriate time to have to become a Mari de Khushbana and to take stock of yourself and to have a broken heart is when you're anyways your heart is broken. Because otherwise, a stamina day, you're in a good mood, you're gonna start thinking my Avedis, it might not work. It might not work. It's a very important, uh, a very practical piece of advice. T take advantage of a time when you're anyways in a bad mood and use it out for some tshuva to break your heart. Al Rebbe says, even though then in Zayir it says that every night we have to be married to Chushbanam, Batikin Chatzais. So he says, that's in the Zayir. And the Rajbi, the author of the Zayir, he's talking about Sadiqim. Sadikim shein b'tzalmeinu kidmuseinu, meaning that they're in the, in the image of Hashem, meaning that the, their own body operates the way it is in the higher worlds. I think I once mentioned to you that according to Kabbalah, every Friday afternoon before Shabbos, just like the first Friday afternoon of the creation of the world, it says that the vayapil lekim, the Eibushter made that Adam should fall asleep. So. So in uh, Kabbalah, it's probably, there's something called Durmita Daza, which means that there's some sort of sleep that happens in the higher worlds okay. every Friday afternoon. What kind of sleep you say? Yeah. There, the Milo, there's the idea of sleep. Whatever sleep is Baruchnius, every Friday afternoon, just like the first Friday afternoon. Adam fell asleep, and Adam represents the idea of Zod, not going into the details. So every Friday afternoon, that spiritual dynamic replays itself. Is that Mincha Gedola or Katana? I don't know. And therefore, Tzadikim, me not included, sleep on Friday afternoon before Shabbos. So the Chassidim is brought down that there was a, there was a great chassid, his name is Rebhil Paracher, and he would sleep on Friday afternoon. The Alter Rebbe would sleep on Friday afternoon. But they said the difference is Rebhil Paracher went to sleep on Friday afternoon. The Alter Rebbe fell asleep on Friday afternoon. <laughs> in other words, because the Alter Rebbe was B'tzalmeinu Kidmuseinu, if Lamaila was a time of Shina, a time of sleep, then he also would sleep. There's another famous story about this, how the Rebbe Aaron HaGadl, Rebbe Aaron of Karlin, the Holy Rebbe Aaron. So um, it happened once, it was Friday afternoon, and he was in the base Medrash by his Rebbe, the base Medrash of his Rebbe, the Magid of Mezrich, and he was saying Shira Shirem. As is the meaning by many chassidim on Friday afternoon before Shabbos to say Shirashinim. And suddenly in walks 
the 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 gabai of the of the Mazitra Magid and tells the Baran Kalina, the Rebbe asks that you should stop saying Shir Hashirim because your Shir Hashirim is causing a tumul in heaven and the Rebbe can't sleep. <laughs> Maybe saying too loud. And by, no, it was, it was a few blocks away. That wasn't the, the point. Was <laughs> no, it was making a tumul in heaven, and therefore the Rebbe couldn't I sleep. <laughs> and by them they say, "You think that maybe this is telling you about the greatness of Rabbi Aaron's uh, Shir Hashirim that made a tumul in heaven? No, that tells you the greatness of the Magid. That as great as the Shir Hashirim of Rabbi Aaron of Kalin was, the Magid's sleep was even more important. And that's what, which is why the Magid felt that he has to stop saying Shir Hashirim because the Magid's sleep was more important than Rabbi Aaron Kalin or Shir Hashirim." Back upon him, this idea, but it's Sadikim there, but Moseinu kid, but Salmenu kid Moseinu. So they're automatically they reflect the 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 ilma So that when the Rashbi said to make a cheshbon every single night, he was talking about the Sadikim. So just like lemaila, spiritually speaking, day, which is the idea of light, is the idea of simcha, is happiness, and night is the idea of is midas sadin, which is atzvus, which is feeling. Uh, Feeling uh, negative. So therefore, the Barash B says, every night is appropriate for being a Mari de for having a broken heart. Because if you're a big tzaddik, then take every single night you have a broken heart because that's the way it is, Lamaila. However, the Alter Rebbe says, Shar Adam, all other people who aren't tzaddikim. So when is the proper time for them to be Mari de to be these master reckoning? Because it doesn't work stump every night. We're not just because Lamaila, it's a time of Choyshech, doesn't mean by us we'll be able to be married to Chushmana. So for us it is a time when we're anyways a married to anyways when we're anyways upset about something else, that's the proper time to be doing tshuva. And Al Rebbe says more than that. Sha'az, you should know. Why is it that you're upset? Because maskirin isim la ma'ila li isim mari to chushbana. The real reason why you're upset is because in heaven, that's the way of reminding you that time has come to be a Mari the Chushmana to do a little tshuva. Think about that. You're upset about something. I don't know, whatever it may be. So you think that it's, no, you should know the reason why that you're upset, the reason why that whole thing happened is that's head. Milamayla, they're reminding you that it's time to do tshuva. It's time to be Mari the Chushmana and to have a broken heart over the Avedis that you have done. That's what Al-Tabir writes in one place in the Sefer. And in this same Sefer, a little later on, al Rebbe writes, Rebbe says, al Rebbe says that a person has to be married to Chushmana according to the Zayar every single day. But then al Rebbe says, pachas pam At the very least, this has to be done once a month. It will be im she'efshar, and if possible, b'chol shavua once a week. So here we have interesting guidance that although over here the Zayar, the Alter quotes the Zayar that says to do it in time of Tikkun Chatzais, because Tikkun Chatzais is the appropriate time, mitzad the you know the spiritual energies. That's the most appropriate time to be a Mari the Chushmana. But bottom line, the Alter Rebbe says for the average person, it's difficult to do it every single night. So do it when you're already upset. And also the Alter Rebbe adds, but at least we should try to do it. It should be minimum once a month, and if possible to do it once a week. Once a week. And we'll continue, Mitzvah Hashem. Next week. Chabas, everyone. Chabas, Chabas.